Hi, welcome back to Go on the Run. And today we're going to be looking at part two of X519 certificates. But if you remember in the previous video, which I ended sort of abruptly, but I'm really trying to keep this video um, timed down, it's better for you and for me in that it takes me less time to make the videos if I can keep them short, less time to um, edit it. And then for you, it just saves you time. Okay, and plus you get videos more frequently if I can manage that. So today we're gonna continue literally where exactly where we left off. So let's jump to our command line here and you can see I'm gonna run that. Actually, I'm gonna go to my, um, the section we're working on, which is security. And while I start up Visual Studio Code in our example in part two, why don't you just do me a favor, hit the like and subscribe button and thank you very much for doing that. Um, again, it's very important that you interact, give a like, comment on the videos. If you haven't subscribed, please do. If you're doing that already, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. But please help me out and do that. Okay, so we don't have anything in this directory. So like I said, we're gonna start off literally where we left off before. So let's get um, example one, um, get from part one or last example. And that would have been example three and let's copy it over to our part two directory and call it exercise one. Okay, because um, I wanna make sure that I'm in this directory and don't have to do anything weird, I'm gonna cd to that directory and um, here also. Okay, good, so we're in exercise one and let's just run the code that we developed from the last time. Again, I haven't changed anything. So I'm gonna do go run and then do this. It should create this file and we should see it's called C is sort of DER. So this file, we didn't get to examine it, but this is our self-signed certificate. If you remember, that's what we're working on. If none of this makes sense, you really have to start with part one, okay? Um, and then I'm literally picking up from there. So let's examine our file. So we can do open SSL, which I mentioned before, and we're saying we're using the X519 subcommand for open SSL. The default format for open uh, for open SSL file X509 is PEM format. And we know that how this certificate is stored in the DER format. How do we know this? Is because if we go to our documentation here, X509 certificate, it tells you that how um, it creates certificate and store them in the DER format. So we go create certificate. Um, it says uh, create certificate and stores in DER encoding. So that's all we know. And what we want to do is say, this is the format DER. We pass it in our CF sort file, which is this guy. And then we want the text output. And so if we do this and we run it, we can see at the end, it says beginning of certificate. We're going to ignore that. But at least for a certificate, we have a certificate with a version number, a serial number. And all we did um, for this certificate, I think if we go back and look at the code, Let's open this, this, this. Let's see what did we do for um, creating a certificate. Ah, all we did was use um, a big int. We didn't do anything else. Okay, so now let's add a um, a date range. Let's make sure that though we do like one year. And so that is very, very easy to do. So let's do it. So we're gonna say now colon equals the time that now. So today, and so our certificate should not be valid before we create it, that's for sure. And so we can set issuer that not before equals to no, and then to equals to now that add, and we want to add a date. The date we're gonna add is how many years? So we just want one year from now, so zero month, zero date. That's it, just those three lines. Let's save it. And let's now rerun our subkit. So I'll clean up my screen. I'll rerun the code. And I'll rerun the open SSL command. Scroll back up. And now you can see, um, unlike before where we had like January zero, whatever it was, now you can see today's date and time. And then a literally a year from now, which is 2021. So there we go. Now, this is not quite a fully valid certificate. Um, I can try opening it up in my in Mac here by saying open and then do CA cert and see if Mac is going to think that this is a valid certificate and allow me to examine it. And let's see, 
So certificate on no oh, Omnitrust certificate. Let's see. Um, March 27th. No, so that might have been one I created a while back. So let's see. Get info. Okay. Uh, is this the one we created today? Uh, yep, there we go. Uh, so it did open it. Uh, sweet. So if you're on a Mac, you can just do open from the command line and you can see it. All right. Um, let me close that now. Um, let's go back to our example and let's go to exercise two. And we could, if we remember for the create certificate, the template and appearance is this certificate um, struct. And one of the things in this struct is this information about um, the PKI name, right? Which is the issuer PKI name and the subject PKI name. And so um, if we look at the subject here, PKI name, we can see is all that stuff about organization, street name, and so on, common name, and so on. So we can initialize the same structure. So we can say, for example, and so there you go. Our common name, since it's our certificate that we're doing a self sign, it's just our issuer name that we had before. And then we stick in some information about ourselves. And now we have some information. Let's clean up and go to exercise two and then go run again. And then we'll do open SSL, run it on this new certificate. And we should see, yep, and here we go. You can see issuer information country, US, state, well, state, locality, and city, and then the organization, organization unit, and then common name, Omnitrust, and you can see is the exact same information that's repeated for the issuer and the subject. And that makes sense because we use the same certificate which we created here as both the template and the parent, okay? And so it makes sense that all those two information are pretty same. So, okay, let's go ahead and add a bit more information to this certificate. I'm also going to take this opportunity to organize the code a little bit in the sense that I'm going to take this and just put it in a function. So the function just return this value. And instead of us making this section pretty big, we can hide away some of this information. That's all I'm going to do in exercise three. And in addition to adding some more information. But once again, starting off with what we had from before, Let's say I want to create a function here. I'm going to call it function um, issuer info. And then we'll say, oh, this returns an x, uh, returns an x, um, b, k, i, x, that name value. And we'll just move all of this stuff into that function. And then I'll just simply return it. So just move everything into the function. That's all. Again, nothing fancy. Um, what does allow us to do is something of something more simple here, like issuer info. We can do that. And so besides that, let's add um, something new. And this time, I'm going to pretend that issuer has a few hosts that they'd like to add to the surf gate. So, um, so where are these fields coming from? Well, if we go back, if we look at the certificate, there are all these fields. So we're using, you know, some of them already like the serial number, subject, and so on, not before, not after. But then here's this section called subject alternate name values, right? And you can see here it is DNS name, email addresses, which are the two that we're adding, but you also have IP addresses and URL. So where would this show up? Let's say we go to this SSL certificate. We click here, and then we click to um, try to get the information about the certificate. We view certificate, for example, and you can see subject alternate names. You can see they listed a number of host names that they would want to be considered valid with this certificate. Okay, so if you need to verify any one of those hosts, you can say, "Oh, those hosts are already part of this certificate." If you were given the certificate, so that's what we're doing here. We're having some subject alternate name, and I just made up some names and put in there. I mean, it could be. As, as you can see, this is a slice of string, so it could be several. And so let's go clean up 
go to our example three directory. This is our last example. We do go on a run. And then we do open. And then again, we scroll up. And oh, where's our subject alternate name? There it is, right? So DNS, subject alternate names, alternative names. And there it is with the email and the DNS. It didn't separate them out, but it gives you um, like a key value listing of it in the subject alternate names. But there we go, we've created a valid surf gate. Now we don't know how to use it yet, but this is a valid self-signed surf gate. What this means is using this surf gate now, since we've created this, we can create new surf gates and sign them with our self-signed surf gate. And in the next video, I'll show you how, and then I'll show you also how to do that on the command line using open SSL to create a surf gate. And then uh, maybe I'll, if we, have, if we don't go too long, I'll show you how to read back that certificate. Because of course, if you write out a certificate, you must be able to read it back in so you can use it. All right. Thanks for watching. Um, hopefully this was straightforward and um, I hope you enjoy it. Please subscribe if you haven't. If you reach this part of the video and you have not clicked the like button yet, oh man, please do me a favor. Just click the like button. Just click the like button. And then leave me a comment if you really want to just go the extra mile well, at least please click the like button thanks i appreciate your time very much i appreciate you being a subscriber and i appreciate you watching my videos take care have a great rest of the day stay safe bye